Want to learn how to spawn anything in VR chat with world constraints? Well, here we go. Hello everyone my name is Randomly and I'm going to show you all how to make your very own custom world constraints that you can spawn any object or model in any world you want. With world constraints, there are many websites or downloads that you can find to put onto your Unity project. But I want to show you all how to make a world constraint completely out of scratch. To start off with this tutorial we are going to create a game object. Right click your hierarchy and make sure you are not creating the game object in your avatar. We are going to rename the game object to world transform. After you give the game object a name, make sure the positions are all set to zero. You should see your world transform completely at the center of your project. Now we need to locate where we need to place your world transform in your assists folder. What I like to do to keep things organized is making a folder called tools where I keep my VRC SDK folder. Which I am going to make another folder called world constraints. Once you made your folder, go on ahead and drag your world transform from your hierarchy into the world constraints folder. Now we can delete the world transform from the hierarchy because we don't need it there anymore. Now we are going to create three more game objects, again make sure you are not creating the object on your avatar. And remember to set all the positions to zero. Right click on your game object and create two more game objects. Now we can give all these game objects a name, and it's very important that you give them a name so you don't get confused for future projects. The first game object will be called World Constraints, second game object will be Container, and the last game object will be called Reset Transform. After giving the game objects a name, we can now start adding components. Highlight your world constraint in your hierarchy and click on Add Component. We are going to add Parent Constraint. Open Constraint Settings, and we are going to check the boxes of is active and lock. Also make sure your lock is all set to zero in position and rotation. Now we can add a source by clicking on the plus, this is where we will drag our previous world transform that we made and drop it in the source. Now highlight container and we are going to do the same thing by adding a component and a parent constraint. This time with the source we are going to drag and drop our reset transform. Finally we are going to right click the container and add a cube, go ahead and delete the collider because we don't need it, by making this whole setup we can now drag and drop the whole world constraint to our folder to make a prefab. So when you are going to make another future project you can drag the world constraint to your avatar when you need it. Now that we are done making the custom world constraint, I'm going to show you how to spawn any object you want in animations. First right click your world constraint and unpack prefab. Drag your world constraint directly on your avatar and make sure it's not in armatures or body. Then grab your reset transform and again drag and drop directly on your avatar. For any props you want like a table or a chair to spawn in front of you. Always place your models in the container, but just for this tutorial I am going to be using the cube. Now we can start animating, first go to your assists folder and creating a new folder. This is where we will store our parameters and menu expressions. In that folder, right click, create, VR chat, avatars, and there you can find the parameters and menu. We are going to add both of those into a folder and give them a name. I'm just going to call these test for now. Now we need to drop the parameters and menu onto our avatar. By highlighting our main avatar, and which I assume you already have your VRC avatar descriptor component on there. Scroll down until you find playable layers and expressions and click on customize. 
we'll work on expressions first where we can now drag and drop our parameters and menu in the descriptor. Back to our assets folder, we are going to create a new folder called fx, this is where we will store all of our animations and fx projects. Now we need to find our fx controller. Click on VRC SDK, example 3, animation, and finally controllers. Here we can find our default controllers for our animations and expressions. Find VRC avatar v3 hands layer, make sure it's not layers 2. Highlight the controller and press Ctrl D to duplicate, which that controller will be layers 1, go ahead and rename that controller to main FX or default FX. After you rename your controller, go ahead and drag your new controller to the FX folder that you made. Now you have a default controller which you can duplicate for future projects. Create a new FX by highlighting the main FX and press Ctrl D to duplicate, which I am going to give it a name called Test FX. With the new FX, you can now drag and drop your FX onto your avatar, under playable layers and which you can see the FX slot. In your FX folder. Double click UFX and your animator will pop up. Here we can set up the controls or our animation. Start by clicking on parameters and click the plus where you will see some options, we want to have int for this and give it a name which I am going to call it test. Now click on layers and the same thing we are going to click on the plus and give the layer a name to whatever you want. Click the little gear icon and set the weight all the way to 1. Back to our scene and in our parameters and menu folder, we are going to set up the controls so we can access the expression menu in the game. Start by clicking on your parameters and press add, when giving this a name, make sure you spell the name exactly in your parameters fx, otherwise it will not work correctly. Set the type to int and we are done with the parameters. Now set up our control menu by highlighting the menu and click add control. You can name this control to whatever you want. Set your type to toggle and finally set your parameters to the name you have chosen. Now let's start animating when the cube spawns and despawns. In the FX folder, I'm going to create a new folder called animations, here we can store all the animations. Highlight your avatar and press Ctrl D to duplicate. We can now hide our main avatar and work with the clone to make the animation. Make sure you are in your animation folder in the assists and highlight the clone. Click on animation and there you can create the clips. You can name it to whatever you want but make sure you add the word on. Press the red dot to record your animation clip, after that, locate the model that you want to spawn and which in that case mine is the cube. Since we created the clip with the word on, we are going to hide and unhide the cube, also go to your container and uncheck the parent constraint. Once you done that, go over by one frame and double click just above the keyframes, that way you can copy your previous keys. Now let's create another clip but this time we are going to name it off. It's the same thing with with clip on, but everything is backwards. Hide your cube and make sure your parent constraint in the container is on, by double clicking the checkbox. Now we are all done with the animations and all we need to do is put them in your FX. First hide your clone and unhide your main avatar and locate your FX. Highlight your layer that you made and locate the two animations that you created. Make sure you drag and drop the off animation first, that is very important. Now you can drag your on animation. Before we start messing around with transitions, Highlight both of your animations and make sure you uncheck loop time.
right click your animation and make transition, there you can drag a line to your other animation, do the same thing with your transition going back. Highlight your off animation and on the right we need to set some settings. Turn off exit time and write defaults. We want to spawn our model instantly so we are going to make transition duration to zero. At the bottom under conditions, press the plus icon, here you can scroll down to the name of your parameters that you made, set the condition to equal and the number one. Now highlight your on animation and we are going to do the same thing like the off animation but just a little bit differently. In conditions, set it to not equal and the number 1. After you are done with all that, the last thing to do is hide your model from your main avatar. Now we can jump onto VR chat and see what we have created. Go ahead and press the build test. If you followed my steps on this tutorial, that means you have successfully created your very own custom world constraint. Now that you have the basic idea, it's time for you to get creative, thanks for watching and like always. Keep smiling for me.